What's up, Magic family? KG Smooth. We are going behind the magic with the lovely Lizette Martinez from the incredible, powerful documentary that shocked the world uh, early last year in 2019, Surviving R. Kelly. And then this year, at the top of the year in 2020, uh, Surviving R. Kelly, The Reckoning, uh, came out. And we have one of the survivors. She's, a, she's an activist. She's a speaker, an author. Please welcome Lizette Martinez from Surviving R. Kelly. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm glad that you are here. How's um, <laughs> life been during uh, COVID life? And you, just, and you just moved to LA. And so what's that like being kind of in oh. a new city that you're still kind of well, getting acclimated in in this pandemic? No, actually, I moved to Martha's Vineyard. Oh, I, li I lived in LA. You lived in LA and you moved to Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. I had read an article that said that you had moved to LA from. Yeah, well, I did live in LA right after the um, the documentary aired, or the first mm -hmm. one, because I was getting like death threats and break-ins and all kind of crazy stuff going on. So I, I guess I was, I just wanted to go like really far away. And I guess I went to the other side of the country that was like, you know. Well, how did that make you feel? Were you surprised by the backlash that you felt for you just simply telling your truth? You know, you get a lot of love, and then you get a lot of hate, and then you get a lot of love. So it's like an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> um, I didn't really know. We didn't really know what this documentary was going to become or how we were going to be received. I don't think anyone can be really prepared for that. Um, but we definitely weren't prepared for the bullying that goes on. And, you know, they go after our children. and they make fake pages and they're just, they're just so disgusting. And then you have people around the world that love you. So, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. Yeah. Tell us for those who may not be familiar and there may be some who haven't even seen the doc, uh, just tell us your story. Okay. Well, I was a 17 year old girl walking in the mall. I was a cheerleader. I was on the debate team. I was an aspiring singer. I was in an R and B group, two other girls at the time and I just was walking and he came up to me and gave me a hug and said he was uh, working on his album in Miami and um, I really wasn't gonna call him but my friends were really like you know maybe he can help you because he helped Aliyah and and that's how we started we were very young and very naive right unfortunately you know you make decisions but you know at the end of the day it falls on the adult and he he was an adult and so you know the relationship it didn't start as a relationship it started as a working relationship and then quickly i became like someone that was trying to save him all the time and i was a kid myself and so my dreams really took a back seat you know i, I didn't pursue anything um i was so dis disgusted with the industry you know after dealing with him I kind of just wanted to have a normal life. And, um, you know, it's pretty sad that, you know, I gave up on things, but, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a new journey. And I spoke out for women, like young women that are still with him. And I spoke out for the women that were after me. And I wanted to validate that, yes, this has been going on for so long. And, you know, he has a problem and it's not my problem to save him and it's not anyone else's problem to save him. Yes, he, he has a problem. Yes, he was abused. We all know it. I was abused, but I didn't abuse other people. So, um, you know, the documentary was, a, was an empowering move for me because I, for so long, just kind of lived with it. You just learn to live with it and you try to go on, but it's, it's like a time when you're 17, 18, 19, 20, it's like when you're developing. And you're, it, it kind of like set the tone for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't understand. You, you know, it's like, oh, you know, they love to say fast girls. I mean, I feel like, you know, I'm Puerto Rican and, you know, I feel like our culture, you know, Hispanics and African-Americans, like that word needs to be eradicated. Like it's not the young girl's fault. You know, we have to hold the adults accountable. Mm -hmm. how, um, how did you get involved in the documentary? Like how did all of that just come about because just seeing the amount of you that participated and the same story by every woman. And it's just like, whoa. And, and so um, how did it all come about? 
Well, I called BuzzFeed in May of 2018 after hearing about the, the cult. You know, they were talking about the right. cult that he had going on and speaking with the savages where their daughter, um, Joyce, is still with him. Mm-hmm. And they reached out to me and they said that they were going, they were working with Lifetime, I guess, like gave Lifetime my information and Lifetime reached out and I was like wholehearted, like in it from my heart. You know, I didn't understand that this is a business, you know, even though we're trying to save others, we also have to be careful. And that's something like um, my message today is like, you know, always look out for yourself. You know, you have to look out for yourself. I, I made that decision to do the documentary because it was necessary. But, you know, and this is in my book, I suffered for it. You know, like my life turned into something else that I didn't really feel I signed up for. You know, you, you lose your job over it. You try to find another one. You go, you, your lawyer's glory are all red and people don't want to get involved in that. Mm-hmm. So it becomes like you become a public figure, but you're not really a public figure because you're not in the industry. You know, you're just kind of thrown into this. And I don't regret it. You know, some days, some days I do, but today I don't, you know, it's an up and down thing with me, but the most important thing is that he has been held accountable and women, the young women and the women my age, we feel empowered. You know, the secret's out. We're not hiding anymore. I can understand that up and down feeling of, you know, should I had done it, should I had not done it. But I guess on the other end of it, the only thing that I could come out of thinking is that you are helping save lives. (laughs) Yes. Period. Period. Because so many (laughs) women are afraid to speak out and they become, uh, they they get victim blame. And, um, and that's why they stay silent because of all of that. So you yourself, (laughs) Lizette, are extremely strong to, I appreciate that. Uh, for, for, for doing what you're doing. No, because it takes a lot of guts. I mean, I know grown men who aren't that brave to, uh, I mean, I know grown men who are afraid to <laughs> look at themselves in the mirror and just admit that they're a, you know, that, that they're a trash man when they know that they right. are, they can't say it to themselves. Like I've had grown men say like, I don't want to go to a therapist and, and, and have to face me. And face that. Yeah. <laughs> And face myself like that's something that I'm not ready to do. So, right. um, so kudos to you for for thank that. You. And yeah, and you, no, I, no, seriously, like thank you so much. That means so much to me. You know, I I receive messages all from all over the world, men, women, teenage girls, older women, and so it makes it all worth it. You know, because you want to give someone hope, and you want to be um, a voice for. For the voiceless who who feel they're voiceless but they're not, you know, I'm kind of like that girl that got out and 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 made it out. They look at me like that, like she, you know, she made it out. She said it, she spoke her truth, and so I may have lost a lot, but I also gained. I gained that which is priceless. So, how were you um, feeling when they approached you about being in part two? <sighs> <laughs> oh, I bet. Did I feel? Well, you know, I'm the one that they call like the little pit bull because I'm like I'm down for it. Uh-huh. Um, it wasn't the same experience. I'm just gonna leave it like that. It wasn't what I expected. It was. It's in the book. It kind of was a little bit of a train wreck. Mm. Um, they started involving other people that really, I don't feel, I don't feel should have had a platinum, should have had a platform to go up to speak badly again about us. I thought that was really distasteful Mm. and, you know, I don't hold back when I, when I say things, I say them and that's it. And lifetime, you know, I feel like they could have been a little less messy, but we still down for the cause. So it's all good. Right. Right. It is all good. So what have you been up to here lately though? Like you got your nonprofit, so, writing, so you're doing that. I'm writing this book, and then I have a nonprofit oh. that is named after my grandmother. It's called House of Dahlia, and it's safe homes that we're going to be building, starting oh. in my hometown in Miami. And you know, these are for these are just like 
homes and that's not an institution it's a place for you to go when you want to leave a situation men or fe- men and women it's i'm not saying i was only women like i want people to be like i'm going to lizette's house because i need to get out of this mm-hmm. and so that's what i'm working on and um you know in the book and and just trying to get back to some normalcy and try to i really would like to do a high school tour and speak to children, but now with COVID, I'm not sure, but you know, I'm working on trying to figure out how I could do that. Because I was a teenage girl and I wanna, I wanna reach out to these girls. Mm-hmm. That's dope. So, uh, so tell us about uh, the song. I heard you got some music that <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> you got a lot, you got the book, you got the nonprofit, you got the song, you got the podcast. I can't find a nine to five, so I gotta get my hustle on. Hey, you hu- you hustling, hustling every day. I'm hustling. So, uh, what's the song? What's the name of the song? So the song is called "My Truth," and I wrote it for the survivors. You know, mainly for the R. Kelly survivors, but it's like an anthem for just anyone who survived something and who's like stepping into their destiny and their truth. It's for them. So we're finishing up with it and. I really want Gaga to sing it. So I'm trying to get mm. into that kind of, that circle right there. I'm, mm-hmm. You know, I want, cause she came out and supported us 1000%. And she's one of the very few women and, in the industry that did. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would love for her to maybe take a look at it. Um, and if not, you know, there's, there's a few of us singers that were in that documentary and it would be nice too if we recorded it. That's dope. What was your uh, relationship with the other survivors? Do y'all keep in touch for the main? For we the most cool, part? but you know, it's like a difficult situation because you know we all have different stories, but right. they're kind of very they're very similar. But it's like different eras, and you know, probably different levels. Different to, levels. You know. you know what I mean? Like I was a flying. That's what they call it, I guess, a flying. You know, after after the relationship start going left. Then I became what I became. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I don't try to glorify my relationship with him because it wasn't. I was a kid and that's what it was and it was what it was. And I am truly a survivor of that situation and they are as well. But I think like, you know, some people just don't want to be bothered. They want to go on with their lives. And I, but I support them 1000%. That's what's up. That's what's up, Lizette. I am so glad that you- I'm glad that you are doing well, man. And I'm uh, trying, you know, I'm trying. It's not easy, but I'm sure you got to stay in the light. You know what I mean? What's you your support keep- system like? Like, what's you got? I nice have very good foundation have, at the crib. I have a, I have very good friends. Um, I'm single, so I'm not in a relationship. Um, that's been difficult too, because you know, men don't really, they don't want to get involved in this. Hmm. I'm gonna put that on that show. I'm gonna put that on my show. Yeah, that, that is something that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, you're even though you're still to, healing, I'm trying to be like, lighthearted about it, but it's, you know. No, no, not, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. But, but you're still healing. Like, it doesn't seem like you're carrying all of that no. weight and baggage now. So no. it's not like you're still damaged. No, I'm not damaged. You know what I right. think? Right, so that's why I'm like, why, why are guys tripping? Like, especially if you're strong and you're better now. I guess it's just, what, they're just they, intimidated they, from the know, situation? Cause, listen, because they, you know, they don't want that. They, 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 some of them feel like it's drama or, you know, a lot of them that approach me are in the industry and I don't want to date anyone. Ah, got you. And so, like, they like me, but then it's like, oh, but she's a Sir, Sir R. Kelly survivor, could hurt my my career you know what i mean so i just want a regular nice guy wow yeah yeah it's get okay. you a regular degular schmagular there's nothing wrong like with myself. regular, it's regular nice. exactly. yeah, no. there you go. come to miami you know <laughs> come to miami drizzle a little Your chocolate around miami. you know we can it'll be fun do the podcast it'll be poolside with lizette girl <laughs> let me tell you something that show is going to be something else. You should come on it. I can't wait. No, I, but if I come on, I want to be poolside with Lizette for real. Not you Zoom style. <laughs> right. No doubt. <laughs> Listen, g- give out your social media so everybody can follow you. Like, I love your spirit. You, you're so you're oh, dope. Thank you. I love yours, too. Um, well, I'm not on Twitter. Listen, Rob's Peahive, what we call them. 
they drove uh, me out of the hair. Not the pee high. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my god. Hell no. I didn't make that up. Okay. I didn't make that up, but That's funny. This is what this is what the circle says, you know. Right, right, like, right. <laughs> they drove me out of Twitter. I can't be Damn. Okay. But are you still on IG? But I'm on Instagram. Okay. I'm on Instagram. So it's Lizette, my name. My last name is Martinez underscore official. And basically that's where you'll find me. And I've been, you know, I post a lot of positive um I don't like to get into drama, so it's a lot, it's very positive. That's a lot of positive affirmations and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Women empowerment, and you, that's where you'll find more information about the book coming out, the song, and poolside with Lizette. No doubt. Real quick, um, and my nonprofit. Let's not forget about that. Yes, yeah, so is there a social media for for that as well? Not yet. We just getting this paperwork stuff going. It's very. It's 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 yeah, it's a tedious process. Yeah, I know about you know nonprofits trying to get the five hundred one c three. It's a it's a whole right, thing. But we're gonna get it. So yeah. Yeah, you're gonna get. It. Of course, you're gonna get it. Yeah. I am interested to know, like, uh, what are your shows? Like, what are you watching on uh, any of these streaming uh, uh, platforms watch- or just on cable? Like, what are your shows right now? Oh well, let's see. I watched the last thing I watched was the Epstein stuff. Oh okay, yeah, I watched uh, that too. But I'm more into music. I don't really watch a lot of television. So um, I was stuck on Ray Donovan for a while. Oh, yeah. Ray Donovan. And you know who I saw? I the other day? He almost ran me over, Terry from Ray Donovan. Oh, word. <laughs> I was like, Terry! And he just looked at me. Girl, y'all on TV, Terry. My name's not Terry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but um i'm just like right now i'm bumping brandy's new album i just can't yeah, drop it. brandy's album is a vibe man it's, it's such a vibe yeah them yeah, vocals okay. i was you seeing know, on like, social media like people were up and down about it i was like yo it's a vibe it, it, it was giving me you know like janae Aiko, you know that, type you know she, scissor type she, vibes she did that thing i'm so happy for her i love yeah. that back like that i love that you know what yeah. i mean yeah support that i bought the album because i know that she's independent so yes I, I bought the album and i'm gonna go to target and buy the cd too yeah so, do that yeah. I, I love cd i'm old school yeah me too yeah oh um, if i was to show you my cd collection from me buying <laughs> them <laughs> just as a teenager and then when i got into radio you know with the label sending cds all the time like with that taking cds from work uh my cd collection is stupid i dumb. bet yeah, it is. I, I keep thinking, like, <laughs> what to do with the CDs, like, the, the, the covers of the CDs. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I should, like, make Maybe you should make a collage. Make yeah, a collage. like a collage on the wall. But I would make want it to be, like, a, uh, like a face or uh, some sort of figure out of the yeah, CD that's covers. Cool. You know how they do, you know how they do yeah. that. Yeah, you but, should, like, mural, but make it into something with using the CDs. CDs, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to collab on that. Lizette what? Martinez, as ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> follow her on Instagram, Lizette Thank Martinez you. underscore official, poolside, the podcast, poolside with Lizette is coming soon. And you're coming on with me. And I'm coming on with her, so it, it's going down uh, in Miami, oh, H-Town of Miami, uh, <laughs> link up, listen. Thank you so much for your time. You are, uh, I love your spirit. Such a beautiful spirit and yeah. person. Um, I love you too, thank you. So um, we'll keep in touch because I'm, I'm for real about coming down there and being on pulse. Okay, good. <laughs> thank <laughs> for you for sure. having me. And to the listeners, thank you for the support. Indeed. Lizette Martinez from Surviving R. Kelly, also an author, a speaker, and an activist. Uh, we, we appreciate you. And Magic Family, I will see you on the radio.